Well, everyone's just the last people coming in. So welcome to the first of the concurrent sessions this morning. I'm going to get, just jump straight into it. If we could save questions to the end too, guys, um, and we'll pass the microphone around. It's with great pleasure I introduce Heidi Winter with Catch Me If You Can, The Art of CTF. Give her a big applause, guys. Good morning, Osa. So I have a bit of a content warning here at the beginning of this talk. So I did give this talk a couple of months ago in Cairo and I got some feedback some, from people who viewed the video saying that it's probably not very appropriate for Auscert. I needed to tone down on the memes a little bit. Uh, this, is, this is a professional conference. So I went through and um, changed all the text and the pictures and made it all businessy and things along those lines. And then about 6 a.m. this morning, I got really angry and put in more cat memes instead. So this is about 200% cat memes than you probably would actually normally be exposed to. So, <laughs> so hi, I'm Heidi. Um, you can find me on Twitter as uh, winter underscore Heidi. Um, I have a little CTF team called uh, Cult of the Party Parrot. We're a, a female team, all girls, um, LGBTQIANB positive team. So if you um, or anyone is interested in joining a CTF team at the end of this, please come see me. Um, I've done a lot of things in uh, security over the years, but most likely you um, can see, find me um, giving kids lessons. I run Capture the Flag classes for high school kids and um, girl guides mostly. So um, I've done a lot of things in security. I've worked many places as a consultant and direct employee, but while my history is in telecommunications and enterprise systems development, I've had the pleasure of working in security in many spaces from compliance through to malware analysis. And at the moment, I'm um, working with blue teams setting up security operations. But the thing I love most is giving back to the community and encouraging others to find their passion in the space. So I do a lot of work with adults and kids playing capture the flag games for education and fun. And I find it pretty rewarding. So um, this is designed as a 101 talk. So we'll start off with what is a capture the flag game? So this is uh, a picture of DEF CON, actually. This is taken from the Wikipedia page for DEF CON. Um, so capture the flag games are competitions and puzzles based on real world information security vulnerabilities and challenges that are played online or at security events and conferences. Individuals or teams race against uh, the clock, uh, solving competitions and fun exercises, gathering flags to earn points. It's not actually people running around in fields trying to get flags. Um, it's an opportunity for existing and new skills to meet and grow in a great environment. So there's a couple of different game styles. Uh, so there's uh, standalone games. There's uh, what's called Jeopardy games and attack and defend games. So standalone, um, in the blue sort of context, you're looking at Boss of the Sock, where you can um, look through data sets and find different flags and get points. Um, Over the Wire, which is a really good set of games which are available um, to play individually. Uh, and also we've got Hack the Box and also Valen Hub. So you can download uh, vulnerable machines and um, they're great for practicing on. Um, they're not always event-based and they're always available. As you play, they get progressively harder. Um, Jeopardy. So you've got um, good examples of these. Uh, Pico CTF, we've got Seesaw CTF, Facebook CTFs on this weekend as well, if you wanted to give that a go. Um, they're starting up again. And um, you've got um, a lot of that are available on CTF time. So CTF time, I'll be posting all of these links later on. I did originally actually have them sitting within the slides, but I go pa past them too quickly. It wouldn't be very valuable to you. So I'll be posting them all online later. Um, CTF time's really good because you can see as to what's actually coming up and what's available. So there's a lot of different play styles that you can actually do when it comes to these games. So you can play individually on your own if you want to when it comes to online, or you can get a team and work together on challenges. Um, so there's a lot. There's a lot of different types of games as well. Um, but um, 
So we've got things along the lines of binary exploitation, cryptography, steganography, social engineering, vulnerable web, um, forensics, networking, physical security, <laughs> virtual reality, uh, virtual and like mobile, open source intelligence, and pretty much anything you can come up with. So when I was at DEF CON last year, I met this guy sitting on a rock, staring at flamingos with me, and we were chatting about CTFs, and he said to me, the one good thing about CTFs is that you get to learn a lot about the person that's actually putting the CTF together. So basically, the person whoever actually puts it together and the challenges that they put together are what you're actually having to work through. And so it gives you uh, exponential options and also things that you can play through. So um, I, I've been working in um, IT for about 20 years now, so I don't trust technology at all. So I was going to put together a video as to an example as to like the small CTF, but um, so you're just going to have to go through one at a time. This is from Christchurch HackerCon um, in 2018. So you start off with a PDF um, and you try to open it up and it's not actually a PDF at all. So you do uh, basic uh, um, like file inspection depending on the actual system that you're working with and how you go about things. When I first started doing these, I'd just go straight to doing hex inspection and actually having a look at like what the headers were on the particular files. But in this case, it turns out that it's actually a PCAP. And so you open it up in Wireshark, have a look through the contents, and it turns out that there's actually um, files embedded that you can download. So you pull them out as um, download via SMB, and then have a look at that particular file. Um, and turns out that that itself is actually a zip file, and that zip file, <laughs> it just keeps going. And so that zip file's got a couple of images inside it, and then you uh, extract that, and you've got different images. The first image, um, having a look at it um, in a couple of different ways, and it turns out that it's actually got um, the CTF flag is actually embedded within the image itself and changing, you can do this in a couple of different ways. You can either brute force it with specific tools or you can just mess around with it in GIMP. Um, and you can't see it too well, but in the right hand corner you can actually see the flags actually embedded. So, and then moving on to one of the other pictures, um, you've got, uh, having a look at it, you're like going, okay, what is it? Oh, it turns out that this is actually embedded within the EXIF information within that particular file. So, um, and then that particular comment actually leads you on to further hints as to the rest of the challenges that are in that. So I think if you actually look up IDRIX, that ends up with um, being a hint towards VeraCrypt. And one of the other files, that's a password for the, and you just keep on going and going and going, getting flags that go along. This is actually part of their um, uh, CTF for their actual conference last year, and it's pretty cool. So um, with the Stego, you've got things like EXIF tools. So you can go and have a look. Um, when you need to actually view the EXIF information on the files, uh, Steg Cracker is like when we need to actually brute force to uncover the data, which is pretty useful. Um, GIMP was the tool I was just using before to mess around with the hue. So if you're um, not really sure as to what's actually in there and you just want to have a play around with it, it's an option for you to have a go with. Um, and just inspecting like files for the actual having to have a look, have a look at the hex. Um, so when you're moving on to things like reversing challenges, something I find pretty useful is uh, Binwalk, which is good for reversing, extracting, and analyzing the firmware. Um, Gidra, uh, thanks NSA. Um, it's a free and open source reverse engineering tool. I actually haven't used it. Um, I've been using IDA for most of the stuff that I've been playing around with for a while, and um, I haven't really had too much of a reason to um, give other tools a go, and I quite like IDA. Um, binary Ninja, um, so it's your friend for binary analysis. Uh, Anger is actually pretty cool. Uh, it's a binary analysis framework which when used, probably can be used in CTFs to contribute processing time. Um, so one thing that's actually not done very much in Australia but is done um, quite a lot overseas is social engineering um, CTFs. Um, and we do have some open source intelligence, um, so OSINT CTFs working around here. Um, there's one that runs out of Sydney, which is pretty cool. 
Um, things that you can use in that is Billing Cat's uh, toolkit. It's an online investigation toolkit um, with a list of tools used for verification and open source investigations. Um, awesome Ozint is a curated list of Ozint resources. Um, if you're interested in having a look at social engineering and the different challenges and um, those sort of things, have a look at socialengineer.com. They've got a lot of uh, podcasts and resources on that particular subject. Um, and there's also a really good book called The Science of Human Hacking as well, which is worthwhile checking out by Chris Hadgeny. <laughs> so, I have a six-step formula for plain CTFs uh, and um, it's cat meme edition, obviously. So, game approach when you're giving a CTF a go. Just play a game, watch a game. Be context aware, so when you're actually having a look at the different CTF games and the different actual uh, per, um, puzzles that you're working on, obviously don't try to run Stego on files that are associated with, um, yeah, <laughs> I have completely different challenges. Have a look at the program that you're working on. Uh, when it comes to previous write-ups for other CTFs, especially when you're dealing with hints, you can actually uh, find that there's actually quite a lot of resources available online which will give you, uh, especially when you're starting off playing CTFs, as to how to actually approach particular problems. And use your available resources, whether or not it's people or whether or not it's just um, the different tools that you've actually got. Um, have a look at your actual different chats that you may have access to and slacks and groups along those particular lines. And don't be put off. They're pretty hard, uh, especially when you first to start off and you're not really sure as to where to actually go. Um, but if you just keep it up and keep it going, um, you'll, it's actually really, really rewarding. And once you give it a go, and whether or not you actually manage to do very well at your first capture the flag game that you have a go at, just return to step one and keep going and do it a little bit more, make a little bit more effort. So. You can also extend these particular skills that you use when it comes to the capture the flag games into other areas as well. So um, you can extend them into bug bounties, um, depending on the actual challenges that you're actually doing. Pen testing, some of the particular skills can be appropriate. DFIR, um, you've got the incident response and the analysis side of things. I have to say that uh, a couple of months ago I went off and did forensics training and uh, I found it significantly a lot easier because I'd been doing forensic CTF challenges for the last couple of years, just trying to work out what I was actually doing in them. So when I went off and did the forensics training, I'm like, oh, I know all of this. Oh wait, I can use these tools and it's actually easy? Oh, that's sweet. Um, and you can go off and make your own CTF as well. So there's a lot of different platforms you can actually run off. So CTFD, which is available, so you can actually host your own um, locally or you can actually pay a subscription and they'll actually just host it for you. It's amazingly simple. Uh, Neverland CTF is a CTF which is over in the States run by a bunch of kids that came out of the Roots program, which is the kids' DEF CON area. They run their own CTFs annually now, and um, there's a lot of resources that they've got available online to um, run your own. Facebook CTF, um, Facebook put out their own platform, which looks extremely pretty and has lots of maps and spinny things, but is probably, um, well, it's a bit bulky. Let's just say for their CTF this year, they're actually using the CTFD platform, which is says a lot. And there's also open CTF as well. So there's more than a few platforms that you can actually run these on your own. Um, so I um, came down with a massive cold yesterday. So I'm going to actually wrap this up a lot earlier. Uh, if you want to ask any questions, go ahead. But I may sneeze on you. But thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? No? Okay. Well, thank you very much. And if you could give Heidi another big happy applause.